It's day one of the summer staycation, and the kids are baking. May the Lord have mercy on my soul. The kitchen is an unseasonal winter wonderland of flour and icing sugar. Millions of hundreds and thousands lay scattered across every work surface. The back wall is now where. Betty Crocker Jackson Pollock. The smoke alarm has died of inhalation, and one of the cupboard doors has become unhinged in solidarity. I catch sight of myself in the mirror. I'm not sure if it's self-raising flour, or if I'm actually that grey now. But I look like Julian Assange. My kitchen has eczema. My patience is in tatters, and I am literally and figuratively treading on eggshells. Bake some cakes! Yay! It seemed like such a jolly idea. Something to get a few hours of non-stop amber rainstorms. Something to bring us together as a family. Create some Insta memories, and then at the end of it, you can eat cake. Wrong. At the end of it, you have aged fifty years and ground several centimeters of enamel off your teeth. What you've in fact made is a burnt cow pat of despair and a mess that will outlast religion. We all know that baking isn't really for kids. It's about precision, discipline, and technique. It's not about enthusiasm or fun or God forbid, let's chuck a load of sweets in a bowl, add an egg, and see what happens. Baking and kids go together like. Cheese and custard, which incidentally has formed the basis for our daughter's alternative chocolate cheesecake. Are you paying attention? Good. This is the way your sanity will be attacked. Okay, we need to add two tablespoons of syrup. Mummy, is this a teaspoon or a tablespoon? It's a teaspoon, darling. What's a tablespoon, Mummy? Um, the bigger one, darling. Fifth one? Uh, no, that's the um. Fifth one? That's a ladle. Fifth one? That's a serving spoon. Fifth one? That's a spatula. Fifth one? I'll get it myself. You know when you censor yourself? You put yourself on mute for that one naughty word, for the sake of your innocent children's ears. Yeah, well, I think my son thinks he's going deaf. Fifth one, fifth one, fifth one, fifth one. Okay, now we have the cocoa and the two eggs. Can I do it, Mummy? Uh, okay, but be careful. I watch as four eggs go in, along with eight pieces of shell. I then spend a full ten minutes chasing the elusive shits around the bowl with a larger piece of shell. My daughter stands there, her hands covered in raw egg. Oh, mummy, you've got some egg shell in your hair. She gently combs the raw egg into my hair with her fingers. Can I? Stir it, mummy. Yes, of course you can, darling. We pour the mixture into a tin that I've definitely forgotten to grease, and for a brief while, there is a blissful bubble as the kids watch their creation slide through the oven door. I think this is going to be the best chocolate cheesecake in the world," whispers my daughter. 
It's giving me hunger pangs, whispers back my son. It's giving me type 2 diabetes, just thinking about it. Can we add sprinkles, mummy? Pleads my son. Um, you don't normally add sprinkles to a cheesecake, darling. Please, let's take a look at it first. Okay, let's take it out of the oven. I infuse the moment of truth. Ooh, it looks, and I cannot stress this enough, awful. Somehow, the chocolate has sunken and puckered in the centre, giving it a very distinctive shape. Mummy, darling, is this the cake's arsehole? Um, would we say arsehole? Yeah, but it could be it's a belly button. Yeah, my God. You can't eat that, whispers my brain. That's basically rimming. I glance down and my daughter's large dark eyes are searching my horrified face for praise. It looks pucker, I smile. Hmm, um... Maybe we should add some hundreds and thousands after all. Yay!